okay, in this case we're given a cone and we're asked to show, um, or let's actually fill in some of the details first. So we've got the cone, it's got a radius here, and the volume of the cone is pi over 3 cubic meters, um, and the height here is h. Okay, and what we have to find out is, um, first of all, the, so we're talking about surface area here, and we have to show that the surface area equals pi over r times the square root of 1 plus r to the 6. Okay, now any time we're given a um, question that says show, that's nice, because show means that we're actually given the answer, so we have to end up with that answer. So normally I'd look and say, okay, what do what we actually have to end up with? But they've given us the answer. So all we have to do is start with a and do a whole bunch of steps, and hopefully at the end of those steps we're going to end up with exactly that answer. So show is nice because the, um, the examiner has given us a little bit of help. And we're also told the formula for the surface area of the coin, which is pi r times h squared plus r squared. So this process should be fairly straightforward. Not that it's easy, but it should be fairly straightforward. And uh, all we have to do is get rid of the h so that we end up with the uh, a in terms of r. And if we do it right, it should end up with this answer up here. Okay, so that's what we're going to try and do. Um, okay, so the, what we have to do is use a formula for the volume of the cone. So the formula for the volume of a cone, which will be given to us, is pi r squared h over 3. Okay, and so based on that, h equals, what's that, 3 times the volume over pi r squared. And we're told in this case that the volume is pi over 3. So it's 3 times pi over 3 divided by pi r squared. So this is quite nice because the pi's cancel and the threes cancel. So we just get 1 over r squared. So that should have been h. Yeah, h equals 1 over r squared. Okay, so that means that h squared, we can now plug that into here. So we get the area equals pi r. Okay, let's do this carefully. 1 over r to the 4 now because we've got h squared plus r squared. Okay, and that's it. Now we just have to somehow simplify that um, equation. So uh, we've got the area equals what's the thing, simplest thing to do is just bring this over common denominator, which would be r to the 4. We've got 1 on that side and r to the 6 on that side. That's nice. We can see that we're kind of, see, if you compare that with this, it's kind of getting close. Um, okay, so the square root of 1 over r to the 6 divided by square root of r to the 4. Um, that becomes r squared. One of those r's cancel. So you get pi over r times 1 plus r to the 6. Ta-da! Okay, so that's what we're aiming for, and that's what we get. Okay, so that series of steps is all we need. Okay, now the thing with show is that even if you didn't get that, you can still use that information um, for the second part of the question. So the second part of the question says that you have to find um, R and H um, for minimum value of A. Okay, so now we know that the A is minimum um, when DA, DR equals zero. Okay, so now all we've got to do is differentiate this. So DA, DR equals, all right, um, Okay, so let's do it this way first. A equals, let's go back to here, and just bring everything to the top and get rid of the square root sign. So pi r to the minus 1 times 1 plus r to the 6 to the half. That looks right. So therefore, dA dr. Okay, so we have to use the product rule and the chain rule. And the pi is just a constant at the front. So product rule, differentiate that one first, so minus r to the minus 2 times the first, no, times the second, plus, leave the first one as it is, times the derivative of the second. So we bring the half to the front, 1 plus r to the 6, um, to get minus a half here, subtract 1 from that, and then use the chain rule to differentiate the r to the 6, you get 6 r to the 5. Okay, so it looks like a pretty ugly mess, but let's see what we can do. And the first thing we can do is obviously the half and the 6 multiply together to give it 3. And the r to the 1, 
and the minus 1 and the r to the 5 are going to give us an r to the 4. Does that look right? Okay, that's not too bad. Um, let's bring outside the brackets whatever we can. And the minus would be an obvious thing to bring out. And how many r's can we bring out? So there's an r in here, there's a minus 2 there and a 4 there. So the smaller number we can bring out is minus 2. Um, what about this? That's common to both of those. The smaller one is at minus a half. So we can bring that one out. Okay, and what are we left with? Okay, so in this side, the, the minus disappears, the r to the minus 2 disappears, and the 1 plus r to the 6 um, just becomes 1 plus r to the 6 because we brought out minus a half. So combined with that half, and you get just 1 plus r to the 6. Um, okay, on the other side, the second term, um, this one disappears because we've taken it all out, so that whole factor disappears. Uh, we've still got a 3, and we've got an r to the 4 here, and we take out minus 2, so that leaves r to the 6. Um, and we took out the minus, so that should be minus. Okay, so actually, um, despite the messy look of it, it's actually not too bad. So we get minus pi, the half the minus 2 goes down the bottom, the minus a half also goes down the bottom, times, um, what have we left with? 1 take 2, r to the 6. Okay, and remember, we want to set that to 0 now. Now, this left-hand factor can't be 0 at all, because there's nothing that will make this 0. Um, because you can't even make the bottom zero because that's undefined. So the only thing you can have is this has to be equal to zero. Okay, so we get uh, 1 take 2 to the power of r to the 6 equals zero. Um, r equals, okay, rearrange that. We get square root of a half, actually the sixth square root of a half, plus or minus, and we can um, eliminate the minus because it's a positive radius and you calculate that and that ends up being you know whatever it ends up being and then you substitute that back and you get h where's the function for h we have got h equals 1 over r squared so we can substitute that back and get the value for h as well Okay, and because it's the calculator section, we can just uh, put the numbers into a calculator, and that ends up being 0 0.89 um, meters. And plugging h in as well, we get h equals 1.26 meters. Okay, so those are our two answers.